Good day, everyone. Tim from Timber Visions here. So today I'm gonna kind of give an overview of my heavy landscape trailer. This is an H and H, 18 foot, um, seven foot wide uh, landscape trailer, and I'm trading this off today and getting a different trailer, which you will see in this video. But I kind of wanted to go over what I like about this trailer and what I don't like, and mainly uh, some of the reasons that I'm trading this off and getting a different one. So <clears throat> this trailer has two 5,000 pound axles on under it. Um, so that gives it a, a GVWR of like 9,900, something like that. But with all this tubing up on the top, it adds quite a bit of weight to this trailer. So that cuts into how much weight I can actually put on this thing. And I'll show you the tag here. So you can see here on this uh, sticker, hopefully, uh, 9,900 pounds is the GVWR. And um, let's see, I know somewhere on here it tells you not to exceed a certain amount of weight on here. The weight of cargo should not never exceed 7620. So that's one of the main reasons that I'm uh, trading this off. That's pretty low. Because when you take into account how much my tractor weighs, it doesn't leave a whole lot of wiggle room. So, and this railing that goes along the ends or along the sides here, it, uh, it's not removable, it's welded on. So if I ever wanted to load like a pallet from the side, it can't. I mean, it, it sticks up like, I don't know, it's like 12, 15 inches above the deck. So you literally can, the only place you can load anything is if you take the rear ramp off and then you load it on the back, which then all your weights on the back, which is not the right way to load a trailer so this is removable there's a couple pins you can pull and take it off but that thing is freaking heavy i can move it by myself but it is heavy and putting it on is even more of a pain because you gotta get the, your spring your assist springs set in there just right in the right orientation before you uh lift it up it does have LED lights, which are nice. It does pull nice. And, you know, I mean, it's, if all I was doing is loading, uh, you know, my zero turn, zero turn mower on it or whatever, this would be fine. Because it's got, you know, got the built-in ramp and everything, and that is, it's pretty handy. But, those springs get tired and you don't get much assist from them after a while. So you're basically lifting that big hunk of metal up and locking it into place. But I mean, it's, it's not terrible. And then these uh, hold a ramp up in there. And once uh, you know gravity takes over and this roll pin holds it so it can't rattle and slide out where your ramp would be able to drop. And there's one of those on each side. So, I mean, I've been pretty happy with this trailer other than you can't remove the side gate or the side railing and the load rating. For, see, I, I had the subcompact when I bought this and I was like well over what I needed for the subcompact. I could have put a lot more on there with the subcompact, but now that I've upgraded tractors, this is just slightly undersized. And I want to go with a different style trailer too. Stick with me and you'll see what that is. So this is what I end up buying. It's a load trail, tilt bed trailer. And when we get back home, I'll, I'll show you kind of how it, uh, how it works, but it's a 22 foot and it's 83 wide, has two 7,000 
mount axles. So it's 16 foot on the tilt and six foot up here on the stationary part. This is where I bought this trailer is the OC Trailers Incorporated in Orange City, Iowa. Not too far from where I live. You can go to octrailers.com to see what they have. So as you can see, they have quite the inventory here. A lot of cargo trailers, some aluminum trailers, a lot of equipment trailers, some dump trailers, and more cargo trailers. Quite the inventory they have here. So I could have saved some money and bought, you know, a, a stationary bed trailer. It just has ramps on it like this one does. But I load my zero turn on, on my trailer a lot of times and haul to the other side of town to do some mowing at the wood lot, my son's house and stuff like that. And these don't come very close together. Plus you have these huge gaps in between. I don't know how well the zero turn front, front wheels would handle that going up these. So that's kind of why I didn't go with this style of a, a trailer. I do like the width of it. You know, they're eight and a half foot wide. So you can put four foot pallets on each side, which is quite the advantage. And you don't have to deal with wheel wells and all that stuff like I'm going to have to with my tilt bed but um practical use it this is kind of what stops me from going this direction this is a pj trailer and uh it's a deck over right right next to it is this is an iron ball and it's a deck over tilt which is you know maybe i could have went that direction i actually thought about it but then you look at the the angle you have to go to to get this thing raised up so you can load. I'll do a quick demonstration here on how far up you got to raise it. But that load angle, I mean, I shiver at the thought of having to drive up something that steep to load a zero turn or my tractor. And then it's it's up when you have to get out and lower it back down. So that did not appeal to me. So plus you you pay a little bit more because you got hydraulics involved with it. So I saved myself money plus I don't have that extreme um, angle to, to go up to get up that trailer. So I also looked at uh, a PJ gravity tilt, like same style as the the low trail that I purchased. And you can get them with the, this is a four foot stationary, but you can get them at six foot stationaries also. But these are, they're channel framed rather than I-beam, like the low trail. I do like that they have a lever like this. Um, and that's, that's the same way pretty much as the load trail. We'll go over that when, uh, when we actually use it. And then they also have a, a locking valve to keep it from tilting back down or tilting, uh, up either way. So you can control it with that valve. It basically just keeps the fluid from going through the cylinder. But these are 14,000 also, just like mine. Um, very similar and Slightly less, I think $500 less for for this uh, PJ with a you know six foot stationary, not four foot. Um, so we're, we're comparing like to like to what I purchased. So I, I think they're pretty nice trailers though. Um, but I do like the I beam of the load trail a little bit more. It just seems beefier. But if I didn't have the option for the load trail, I'd probably go with the PJ. And here's an iron bowl, and they're very similar to the PJs. Um, they have a little latch here, just, just like the PJs, and a, and a valve there to control how quickly it goes up and down. 
So, so yeah, he has Iron Bowl here also. Load trail, Iron Bowl, and PJ. He's got a lot of a lot of PJ trailers out here. And heavier ones too. Like these uh over here we we have a I think this is a 24 footer in the PJ. And then here's the load trail, 24 foot. They have the 8,000 pound axles instead of 7,000. And on the load trail, if, if you go that size, then you have two, two jacks, not just the center one. So yeah, they're, they're pretty nice. So this is the same brand as what I bought just uh, heavier axles and it's longer. Okay, so here's another couple options that I had available to me. I could have went with the trailers that have the pull out ramps, which, I mean, let's be honest, those are a pain in the butt, right? You gotta pull that ramp out and deal with all that. Just not ideal for, you know, a lot, if you do a lot of loading and unloading like I do. Or these monster ramps, which these I think are close enough that putting a zero turn on would be okay. But just like my landscape trailer, these are spring assisted. And I think eventually that's gonna wear out. And these things are gonna be heavy to lift up and over. And then lift back up to foot back up. And you got these brackets to hold them. Just not, just not quick and easy. I think they'd be a good option if you're not doing a whole bunch of loading and unloading, which is what I do. I mean, during the summer, I'm literally loading and unloading my uh, zero turn probably like six times, you know, as I load it up in my house, go over to my son's house, unload, mow, load it back up, go over to the woodlot, unload, mow, load it back up get it back home, unload it, you know, and I usually do that in one day, but you know, during the summer, it's like once a week you're mowing and you know, flipping that landscape ramp, I, I got tired of it and I can see it being the same way with these. But if you don't do a whole lot of loading and unloading, if it was just for the tractor, this probably would be the way I'd go. I think they're, they're pretty good, but they're way better than these pull-out ramps that are narrow. Like you gotta get them lined up just right. What a pain in the butt. These are way better like this. So like I said, if I if the zero turn wasn't involved at all, I'd probably go this direction, save myself some money. But since I want to be able to use it for my tractor and my zero turn, that's why I went with the tilt bed. Then, you know, there's uh, dump trailers here too. And I thought about just getting a dump trailer. Um, but if I did, it would be something like this because the sides of these actually fold down. You can fold these down on the side. Um, so you can do side loading. It's a deck over, so it sits a little higher. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a pretty nice trailer to fold down sides. I think all you gotta do is uh, Pull these guys out and then you can fold these down but so he's got pjs here iron bowl We've got a little load trail here that's like uh just a little fella probably i don't know 10 foot eight foot i don't know i think it's 10 foot but yeah just a, a little fella kind of a cute little guy you know, that wouldn't be a bad one for just little, little small loads. Um, but yeah, that's a little, little old trail. Then there's another iron bowl, another load trail. I think it's a little bit bigger than that other one. It might be the same size. But I think that's probably got two, three, five hundred pound axles. So just a 7K. Where these are probably 14s. All right, so we got the, the trailer pulled back home. I, so I kind of want to go over uh, a few of the details of this trailer, and then I'm going to 
load the tractor up on it, kind of show you how that goes for the first time for the loading. So you can see on the deck here that there are D-rings welded on and there are two up front and then or two sets up front and then one set in the back. But then there are also stick pockets kind of in between those. So that gives you a good coverage. I do have those uh, D-rings that you can drop in the stake pockets. So I could pretty much put those wherever I want to um, along the side of the, the rail here. So um, as you can see, there is a I-beam frame. It's an eight inch I-beam frame. Um, it has the uh, Dexter axles, um, has a uh, Brakes for your um, trailer. The coupler is uh, adjustable. So I think I might have to come up one hole from where it's at right now. But uh, cause it's the front end's just a little bit, a little bit higher than, than level. But for right now, I'm just gonna load it, see what it looks like after I have the tractor on there. Um, so it has a, a single jack the front there and there is a channel that's welded in in between here so i could potentially put a, a nice little toolbox in there or something I, I might do that for the future you can get an optional uh expanded metal chain chain uh box or whatever you want to call it it's basically like a tray i guess more or less um it does have the cold weather wire for the, the trailer lights and everything that's indicated by the blue wire there this is uh, one of those, I don't know if this is a Demco or not, but the, uh, the coupler is a little bit nicer than the one I had on the H&H. &H. Um, so, you know, it, it, uh, it's cast and, um, and basically you, you flip it up and then flip it down. And then of course your safety chains your breakaway deal on the other side, you got one of those too. And the crank for the, the jack is, you know, one of these bigger ones. Um, it's a little heavier duty jack than what I had. And then the, the base is spring loaded too, so it will pop back up. You don't have to like pull a pin and lift it up and put the pin back in. It's one of those spring loaded style jacks. But I'll kind of show you how this works. So there is a pin here that you got to pull that locks it open. And then there's just this lever here. You just kick that down and that releases it so that the bag can, uh, can raise up. So it started to raise here a little bit. I just go stand on the back here. You have to go the rest of the way. So there it is tilted up. And I'll show you underneath here. Um, this is your locking latches here. And there's a bar that goes over the other side. There's two spots that lock right into these. There's one on each side. And then there's two hydraulic cylinders. So it makes it, uh, you get double This one here is your main one, but then you also have this one down here that uh, runs through this. So you can open and close this. So if you flip it up, it's closed. And if it's closed, I can go walk up this ramp and it, it will, will stay up so you can lock it the up position. So if, you, if that's something you wanted to do, once I get over, see it's staying up. If I open that, it would have come back down. So that's pretty handy. 
So now flip it back to the open position and then probably gonna take a little bit more weight than me just push it down. But then it'll come down slowly. Then once I'm off of it, of course it will release again and slowly start going the other direction. Which is where I want it to load, right? So we'll put it there. And now you can kind of see, you can see the angle that it's at. It's like 10, 11 degrees is all, all the, the angle that we have to go up to get up this thing. So you can see in the back there, here and over here, there are lights, LED lights, and then embedded in the tail here, there's your three clearance lights in the middle as well. So like when they hit the brakes, I think those light up as well. Um, and then of course there's rubber grommeted clearance lights along the edge. Pretty, pretty nice uh, little trailer. So I, I have the tractor warming up. I'll get uh, set up here so I can get a shot of this loading up so everybody can see how the first loading goes. So here we go. All right, so here we go. I want you to pay close attention to the back of the truck. With that uh, landscape trailer, the back of the truck would lift up so terribly bad. But with this style, it's come up, get it so the, the weight is like so, and it, it just drops right down. So yeah, that worked pretty good. And then to unload, lift my forks, back off slowly. Get that center of gravity to the back a little bit. And it drops down. And then I just back off. No ramps, none of that. Doesn't get much easier than that. But I'll do it again once. I mean, it does kind of sound like it slams, but it, it is being slowed down by the hydraulics. But yeah, with the landscape trailer, that back end really got lifted off. I mean, you could pretty much you had to set the emergency brace because your rear tires are pretty much don't don't have much traction left. But with this, everything's taken by the the axles on the trailer, all the the weights. So yeah, it just slowly comes down. And then you back off. And you're done. Pretty slick, pretty easy. Here's a little look at the hook on this side. The hook's in the right here. So, so it's lashed on both sides. Some trailers that I was looking at also had a, just an over cam that went from here to the trailer frame, but then you have to go to both sides in order to. Um, connect or disconnect. So I'll just come up, stand on here. One thing that I am uh, have plenty of is, is weight to bring that back down. And it's not very far off the ground either. So then I just reach down, 
and that latches them. And the nice thing about that is to this, you know, to release it, I just use my foot. But then this pin actually locks it in another spot here. So it's got two hooks underneath and a pin there. So it should stay, stay down. Plus when you load, you're gonna have it so the weight's holding that down anyway of whatever you're hauling. But I'll get the tripod again and uh, we'll take this off the truck. I'll kind of show you that system. Okay, so with this trailer, this is uh, like spring loaded. So when you pull this out, it it uh, springs it back up. Here, I'll kind of demonstrate. So it's locked in off the ground here a little bit. You can't have weight on it, but you pull this up, and it, it shoots right up. So you don't have to pull a pin and all that jazz. Then of course there's a this guy to crank that down and up. Got a seven pin connector. <clears throat> Safety pins. And then, yeah, just pull that guy up. See if we can get you guys a better shot of that. Okay, so this is uh, closed. Or, I mean, this is closed right there like that. That's closed. When it, when it loosen it, you just pull up on, this is like a, it locks on there. So it holds it open for you. And when you want to close it, you just, release it off of there and it snaps back that helps to open it all right try that again This goes that slow. That's gonna need some lube or something. That is very squeaky. Anyway. So now we're unhooked from the truck. I can pull that away and uh, get this tucked away in the storage. But yeah, there it is. Um, new trailer to use. It's gonna be way better for um, loading, unloading the tractor, loading, un unloading the uh, zero turn mower. It's just gonna work out a lot better for that. And now I have more capacity with this one too. 9,000 some I can put on here. Um, so, so that's good. And so I've heard, um, different views on this. Some people say whatever weight you put on the on the uh, tail of your truck, you can subtract off of the total capacity of this trailer. I don't know if that's true or not. If, if, if you know, put something in the comments because I've heard it both ways. I've heard that whatever that says, don't go over the capacity of, you never put that much or over that amount on this trailer. And I've also heard that whatever tongue weight you put to the truck, you can subtract that amount of weight, you know, so your 10, 15% that you put to the tongue, um, you can subtract off. But I don't know. I, I don't know. It, I'm not an expert in that. But I do like this uh, new trailer so far. I mean, yeah, I've only 
did a little practice run of loading and unloading. And when you're driving up it, that, that 10, 11 degrees still seems like a pretty steep hill, um, but it's not for very long and then it, it comes on down. But yeah, this, uh, this should work pretty good. I got stake pockets here too, if I do wanna put like a wooden rail on here if I'm hauling logs or something like that, or I could put uh, metal rods up, you know, that size. I think these uh, this is inch and a half by three and a half inside of here. But, uh, and I have also thought about the stationary part, extending that out to even with the fenders. So I'd have a full eight foot up here. We'll see how often I really need to put two pallets side by side up here, but uh, but yeah, I mean, if I don't put the tractor on here, I could probably get at least three pallets, you know, two up front here, and then one on the back behind the fenders. Let's uh, let's grab a tape measure. I'm going to do some measuring. So here's one interesting thing: my my tailgate actually comes down and rests upon that, so. You know, you're you're pretty close to your tailgate. I mean, I could drop my tailgate, but it's literally resting on those boards. So, I didn't have that issue with my other one. The tongue was long enough. I didn't have that. So it's something I'll just have to keep in mind. But here I'll measure across And yeah, it's 83, 83 across. And if I measure from here to here, if I look down the edge of this, like 70 inches. So the two inch tubing, so that kind of subtracts that amount. So I have 70 inches to where the fender is to there. is right at 10 foot. So 10 foot from this upright to the fender. So I could easily get a couple pouts up in this area. From the fender to where the wood ends is 65. So a little over five foot back here. So yeah, not too shabby. But I do wanna thank you for stopping in, watching this video. Hopefully. You if uh, you're in the market for this type of a trailer, this gave you some uh, information that, you know, those dealers don't really cover um, or tell you about. Um, this is a uh, pretty, pretty heavy duty though. So I'm looking forward to getting many years of service out of this, this trailer. It's gonna cover my needs pretty darn good, I think. So thanks for stopping in. Until next time, be safe brothers and sisters.